The institution behind me is rich in history for scientific breakthroughs and discoveries in medicine and surgery. Hi, I'm Dr. Sheldon Retchen. I'm Vice President for Health Sciences at Virginia Commonwealth University and CEO of the VCU Health System. It was here in 1968 at the then Medical College of Virginia that a young Dr. Richard Lauer, a general practitioner turned cardiac surgeon, performed the first heart transplant in Virginia and one of the first heart transplants in the world. So tell me about your childhood. <laughs> well, uh, it was pretty average, I think. Where, when did the med school interest come in and how did that come in? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I actually had intended to go into forestry. Uh, and I was very interested in uh, Cornell Forestry School. But um, a lot of my friends started talking up med school and it seemed like a reasonable thing to do. <laughs> so, um, plus the fact that I was courting this attractive young lady at that time, and she lived near New York. Uh, she seemed intrigued with the idea of my being a doctor, so we figured, you know, it might work. So somewhere along there, you went from general practice mm -hmm. to changing direction. Tell me how that happened. I met uh, an internist. Um, and he was, I told him I was interested in surgery, uh, but I just wanted a little bit. So this friend I had met, he said, why don't you go talk to the chief at Stanford? Because he's a pretty easygoing guy. And I did that and he said, no problem, you know, come for one year, two years, whatever you want. So another turn in the road. <laughs> so you arrive at Stanford, uh, I guess this was the um, late 50s or 1960 thereabouts? That would have been 58, I think. 58. Yeah. And you met um, Norm Shumway. Was that, was it, or that was, was a fluke, too, because um, first year residents on the general surgery service were on call to, for stuff that came up in the middle of the night. And um, I got a call one night that they needed somebody to help uh, Dr. Shumway, nobody ever heard of him, um, put a patient on the artificial kidney. <clears throat> As it turned out later, he was hired to do just that. He had been trained as a heart surgeon in Minnesota. Uh, they told him when he came to Stanford that he would not be allowed to do heart surgery because they, um, the guy who was the hottest heart surgeon west of the Mississippi was uh, a fellow named Frank Urbody, and he had absolute locks on the OR. So I think Shumway was uh, somewhat desperate for a job, and Vic Richard said, we will give you a job as an instructor. Uh, and you will hook patients up to the artificial kidney. He said, fine. So tell me a little bit. So you met him, what was he like? Extremely bright, uh, very witty. I mean, he was a master of one-liners. And he said, well, you better come and work with me in the lab. He says, you'll really learn how to operate. <laughs> uh, I think after about three months, I ended up spending maybe six months that year with Shumway in the lab. What kind of stuff did y'all do? Shumway had a great idea, which was that if you cool the heart down, sort of in situ, uh, to a low enough temperature that you could do just about anything with it. And uh, the eye, and he figured out that all you had to do is keep bathing it with very cold saline. It would come to a rest and it would just sort of sit there. You could clamp off all the blood supply to it. The animals on the heart lung machine. And Norm and I would do the experiments that he wanted to start, which was 
to see what you could do with just cooling the heart. Uh, and the amazing thing was that you could completely shut off the circulation of the heart. And uh, an hour later, when you're through repairing what you wanted to repair, the heart would start up beautifully. It uh, led to a huge change in the mortality of open heart surgery in children particularly. And, you know, Shumway should have gotten the Nobel Prize. Dr. Lauer and Dr. Shumway continued their research on cooling the heart to see if that would enable a heart transplant to be performed and while keeping the heart alive. And yet some of their colleagues questioned their work, even at one point asked them to halt. But they continued on, and one achievement led to another until they had their first breakthrough. Soon after we got the lab all set up down there, and uh, we had a dog survive the transplant. And the dog woke up, uh, everything looked pretty good. Um, and what happened was there was a surgeon who we all were very fond of. He was giving his annual address to the, to the uh, press corps in San Francisco. And he was supposed to tell uh, advances being made in medicine, surgery, etc., over the previous year. And he mentioned that a couple of his colleagues had done a heart transplant in a dog. And <laughs> it was slightly less um, attention getting than Barnard's, you know, first case. I mean, it was all over the newspapers. It went, went all around the world on the AP, UP, all that stuff. Somebody named the dog along the way. <laughs> it was like, what is going on? Anyway, the chief of surgery, uh, Garrett Allen, uh, was kind of funny. And he, for some reason, didn't like this. He said, we had to terminate that experiment. By that time, we said, hell with it, you know. We're going to do some more and see what gives here. And I think we did about ten more cases or so. I was doing them by myself now in the lab. I uh, had a student helping me. And so we started to get sort of routine survival of the animals. And it was clear that the first one wasn't just a fluke, that animals would live. I think we had one that lived three weeks without any immunosuppression. Uh, Shumway used to come in and look at that dog and say, that's a smart dog. He knows not to reject that thing. Dr. Lauer's arrival at the Medical College of Virginia was about as unexpected as his decision to go into surgery. But it was David Hume, a pioneer in kidney transplant, who recruited him here to Richmond uh, to work with him. And it was Hume who was the catalyst who pushed Dr. Lauer on. 